Hey guys, it's N.A.K. the Hesina Girl and today I want to come at you guys with a brand new video and I'm going to be talking about 10 reasons why you should come study fashion in Japan. Let's get right into it. Alright, so before we get into the video, the first thing I want to say is hey, my name is Senna. If you guys are new to my channel, hello, welcome. Make sure you click that subscribe button before you leave. If you guys don't know who I am, basically I am a Afro-Canadian girl. I was born and raised in Canada and I moved to Japan four and a half years ago and I have been loving it so far. I'm also a fashion student here. Uh, I study at Bunka Fashion College, specifically textile design. And I want to talk to you guys about why I decided to move here and why you should consider moving to Japan to study fashion too. All right, reason number one, the Japanese fashion industry is so diverse. Now, I'm sure you guys probably know this. If you're from a Western culture, then you'll probably know that the fashion industry in most Western countries is based on trends. So when a new trend comes out, everybody tries to copy that trend, follow that trend, and they try to pump out as much clothes that follow those trends so that they can make sales. But in Asia, specifically in Japan, the fashion industry is so diverse and it's not really based so much on trends as much as it is on um, more specific fashion niches and on people who are interested in a specific style. And so because of that, there's a lot more freedom when it comes to fashion design. That's not to say that trends don't exist or that certain brands don't follow trends, that's not true. But what is true is that because people are more open to wearing things that don't necessarily follow the trends, there are way more options for things that you can wear. If you want to wear cats on your shirt, if you want to wear all colorful pieces, if you want to have trees as earrings, you can literally do all of those things. And that actually brings me to reason number two, which is that the Japanese fashion industry is super niche. Now, when I mean niche, I mean niche niche. Like I mean, think about a niche and then quadruple it like Inception. Quadruple it? Triple it? You know what I mean. If you wanna make uh, specifically clothing that only revolves around pleats, you can do that. If you wanna make clothing that is all black, you can do that. If you wanna make clothing for men, except make women wear it, you can do that. If you're the type of person who's like, honestly, I don't really like my style, I think my style's kinda plain, I wanna zhuzh it up, I wanna add a little something something, you could definitely come to Japan and find your style. You guys would probably be shook. I changed my style so much, and now I'm a little bit more muted, you know, I'm a little bit more adulting, um, so my style isn't that crazy, but back in the day, honey, she was crazy. I was wilding out. I was going to Harajuku buying them weird pieces and I was rocking it, or at least I thought I was. <laughs> okay, moving on. Number three, Japan has some of the world's best textiles. Now, if you guys didn't know, I'm a textile designer student. I love textiles. And one of the main reasons why I came to Japan to study fashion is because I wanted to learn about the world of textiles. And Japan has some of the best. Some of the best denim in the world is made here in Japan because they use indigo dye uh, techniques that have literally existed for decades. Some of the really famous ones that maybe you guys have heard of before is like Sashiko, Indigo. Maybe you guys haven't heard of it, but there's also Yuzen Zome or Chusen or basen. These are all techniques that Japanese people have mastered over decades. Some of these things you literally cannot learn anywhere else unless if you actually come here and learn them from an expert. Fun fact, I also got the chance to go check out a really cool indigo area where they specialize basically in indigo dye. And if you guys wanna check out that video, I'll have it linked this side, this side, I'm not quite sure. I highly recommend that video if you're interested. After this one, of course. Reason number four, Japanese fashion schools are vocational. So basically, if let's say you only want to learn, like me, you only want to learn textiles, or you only want to learn how to make hats, or you want to learn how to make shoes, there's actually specific courses that you can take in vocational school, which is really cool. Um, in Japanese, we call them uh, semon gakko, and semon is basically like a specialty. You basically specialize in a very specific topic. So in my case, for example, I'm taking a three-year textile design course and I'm studying textile design super specifically so all of my courses are centered around textile design so I learn how to weave I learn how to dye I learn how to um, knit if you don't want to really take like a four-year broad program and you already have a pretty good idea of what it is you want to study I highly recommend checking out Japanese vocational schools 
And that actually brings me to reason number five, which is basically that instead of studying at a normal university for four years, you can cut it down to two years or even to three years, depending on what course you want to take. For example, if you already learned some base Japanese in your home country and you only want to take a one year Japanese course, you can do that. And then if you take just a two year course for, you know, a specific fashion topic, then you'll only end up spending three years studying, which is also an option. Also, I just realized that my head has been <laughs> out of frame this whole time so that's cool let's just take a little scooter back there we go all right now reason number six the japanese fashion market is one of the best in the world fun fact if you guys didn't know this supreme which is a super famous streetwear brand i'm sure you guys have heard of it only has 12 stores in the entire world and out of those 12 stores five of them are all in japan yes you heard right five of them that just goes to show you how much the Japanese fashion market is literally insane compared to a lot of other countries. And let me tell you, there are a lot of Supreme fans in Japan. And that actually brings me to my next point, which is number seven. Customer loyalty in Japan is literally 100%. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually worked at uh, a really famous store in La Forêt. Uh, and I've talked about this before on my channel, but working there really opened my eyes to see how crazy people are when it comes to branded items, especially items from brands that they love. Um, because I've seen people pop thousands of dollars on really small brands, like brands that aren't necessarily super, super famous, but they just feel so dedicated and so devoted to the story of that brand, or they feel like that brand really represents them. And so they don't mind dishing out the money to you know kind of purchase those items they're not like buying pieces to just throw them out three seconds later they're really buying those pieces because they want to keep them for a really long time and they want to treasure them all right next up is number eight japan has some of the best fashion schools in the entire world so i'm sure you guys know this already by now but i go to a school called bunka fashion college and there are tons of other schools that are similar to bunka as well that are super good there is Tam tamabi jutsu tamabi jutsu daigaku i think that's what it's called i don't know everyone just calls it tamabi but tamabi is one of the schools that actually offers a textile design program as well and i've heard that that program is super cool i even have friends who study textile design at that school and they had nothing but amazing reviews there's also another school called Modo Gakuen, which is literally like a walk away from Bunka and I always pass by it whenever I'm in Shinjuku and it's really famous because it's in like a really cool cocoon building. There's also Esmud, which is a really famous uh, French school that has a campus in Japan and I've actually gotten the chance to see the end of the year fashion show for that school and it was super cool. So there's tons of amazing fashion schools that are here in Tokyo and even in other parts of Japan as well, not just Tokyo. And so there's so many options of basically schools where you can go to study fashion that are world-renowned, that are super well-known, that have amazing uh, education programs and that will allow you to basically study it and make your fashion dreams come true. Number nine, Japanese is a super great language to learn. Now, I know a lot of people think Japanese is a super hard language because you've got hiragana, you've got katagana, you've got kanji. You basically have three alphabets and one of them has like 2,500 plus characters, which sounds insane and super intimidating, but the one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is the fact that Japanese as a spoken language is actually rather easy to learn. It's definitely a lot easier than most uh, Western languages that we know like French or even Spanish because they don't have a lot of verb conjugation. They don't have a lot of tenses. There's literally the present tense and the past tense, that's it. And they don't even have a future tense. Basically, it's based on context and it's very easy to understand what's being said to you if you understand the way that the grammar works. So I would say if you're somebody who's maybe thinking of Learning Japanese, you're interested in learning Japanese, and you feel kind of discouraged because you're like, girl, I don't want to learn kanji. Kanji is too much for me. Like 2,500 plus characters, that's too much. Nuh uh. Well, I would highly encourage you to first start by learning vocabulary words. You can start by even just like watching movies or anime or whatever it is that tickles your fancy. Get familiar with the Japanese language and start to kind of soak it in auditorily, auditorily, auditory, in an auditory way. There we go. Basically, just find ways for you to kind of soak in the Japanese language in an auditory way. That way you can start to get used to the way it sounds. So yeah, that's my suggestion for you guys. And number 10, the final reason Japan it's just a super cool country all around. If I'm being really honest with you guys, I've been living in Japan for four years now, going on five, and I'm just never 
fed up with the things that I see here. I'm always having fun discovering like cool nature places. I'm always having fun finding new stores. I'm always having fun just walking around for a simple walk. I find the weirdest things. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, as a foreigner, it was really easy for them to adapt to Japanese culture because I think Japanese people's way of living is very simple. It's very easy to kind of adapt to. Even me, as a black girl here in Japan, I'm literally always sticking out like a sore thumb. And Japanese people, for the most part, seem to be really, really open. I know that's not necessarily the case for everybody. Maybe, you know, Everyone's experiences are different, but for me, I can only say that I've had positive experiences here in Japan, you know, and yeah, that's that. Japan is a great country, okay? And yeah, I guess with that, that concludes this video. Hope if you guys were considering studying fashion in Japan uh, or studying whatever in Japan, really, I hope that maybe this video was enlightening to you guys. Maybe you found it educational. Maybe you found out some things that you didn't know before. And if you did, definitely let me know in the comments below. Let me know what it is that you guys want to study. If you're thinking of moving to Japan, if you live in Japan, let me know what you think. And um, be sure to also check out my other videos. I'll have them linked over here somewhere. And yeah. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!